Hello and welcome to Battersea Park in London. The final part of our Battersea Park series will take us to the most famous part of the park, and that is the Battersea Funfair. The Funfair opened in 1951 as part of the Festival of Britain. It occupied a large central section of the park at nine acres in size. It featured many attractions brought over from American parks and traditional amusement park staples. It was the only major amusement park in London at the time and was known as London's Seaside Fun Park, famous from its large surrounding population who spent their childhoods at the fun fair. It was the Thorpe Park or Legoland of its day and even predated Disneyland by four years. Originally designed to last for one year, it was so popular during the festival that it outlasted it by 24 years. The park evolved and became an attraction in its own right, long after the festival became a distant memory. It offered traditional amusement park attractions along with a children's zoo, pet corner, a theater, music hall, treetop walk, Mississippi showboat, and a tented performance pavilion. The previously mentioned Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway from the festival also became part of the park's attractions. For what the park lacked in size, it made up for by its unique and colourful attractions. Much smaller than the likes of Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Margate's Dreamland and Wembley's 1924 exhibition. In its initial years, it was an attractive looking park, with its artistic floral displays but things changed as the park progressed. It became more of a midway type amusement park and many of its attractions had started to look tired or uncared for. Many of the funfair rides operated privately by showmen were brought in to make up new attractions. Rides like the Gallopers, Moon Rocket and Dive Bomber. These proved popular, but took away from the permanent looking park and made it more temporary. With the park also looking more cramped and closer together, it certainly packed in the attractions, but lost its aesthetic splendour it was famous for. The funfair's leading attraction was the wooden roller coaster known as the Big Dipper, which suffered a major fire in 1970 but was quickly rebuilt. It also had another roller coaster named Jetstream that was moved to the now defunct Bellevue Park in Manchester and Dragon Mountain Scenic Railway that operated in the park's early years and was eventually scrapped. A later ride that appeared at the park was the famous water shoot ride. It was made of wood and featured a large drop into a pool of water. This was featured in a lot of the film's footage seen of the park, and I will show you the location for this later in the video. If you were to mention Battersea Funfair now, or even Google it, the main thing you would see is the tragic circumstances that was the park's final downfall, and that was the famous Big Dipper accident. Ridden by many millions of people, and even the Duchess of Kent and her children in 1965, it was the largest and most famous attraction at the park. Tragedy struck one afternoon on May the 30th, 1972, when 31 people who had boarded the three-car wooden train were involved in a major accident on its main lift hill. As the train reached the top of the first incline, some 15 meters high, it detached itself from the main drive cable and subsequently rolled backwards down the lift hill and derailed at the bottom. Despite the best efforts of the onboard brakeman, the weight of the train and the lack of the anti-rollback mechanisms, the train plunged backwards and into a tight curve where it derailed and crumpled upon itself eventually killing five of its riders. Two teenage boys and an eight-year-old girl died at the scene, and two other children died later. The disaster led to a review of fairground safety, and several charges of manslaughter. Prosecutors described the ride as a death trap, citing dozens of flaws and safety concerns. Despite the accusations, the park's general manager and the ride's engineer were both cleared of charges in 1973. A post-crash investigation revealed 51 faults on the ride. Not one person or any party was held responsible, nor found guilty of causing the accident. A shocking verdict after the loss of five young lives. 
The Big Dipper was permanently closed soon after the 1972 accident. It was replaced by a more modern steel roller coaster known as the Cyclone, but the iconic Dipper's retirement led to a swift decline in the park's attendance. The fair's fortunes dwindled until it finally closed in 1974. Temporary fairgrounds would occasionally set up in the park throughout the 1970s, but eventually the site was cleared and taken over by the remaining children's zoo that still operates on the site today. So let's head over to the site and take a look at any remains and explore how it looks today. So where I am currently would have been the back end of the fairground and right in front of us there would have been the Big Dipper roller coaster right where that grass is in the center running from here and down right to the bottom and back up again now today it is a private locked off road so i can't go much further in but i'm going to try get you some shots a bit further round. but it's hard to believe when looking round that all this in front of us would have been the giant fairground rides dotted everywhere so we're just at the back end of the what is today the children's zoo here all of that would have been the fairground in there including the building behind all the way down to the far side. And right where these trees are here would have been the turnaround for the Big Dipper roller coaster as it headed straight down this grass mound on both sides all the way to the bottom. Now, like I said, today it's really hard to get into this site at the bottom because it is a private, private site today. But I'll try and get around the bottom end and show you looking back this way. But while we're here, there is a rumour going round and I've heard it a few times off a few different people and a few different sources that when they demolished the Big Dipper roller coaster, apparently they just smashed it and dropped it where it, where it was standing basically and then piled it up under this mound here. So the mound that you're seeing, because this would have been flat, is the remains of the Big Dipper buried under here. How true that is, I have no idea. So we're now at the bottom side of the Big Dipper site. So right there is that mound in front of us and the Big Dipper would have come towards us and it would have turned round somewhere about here and headed back up again. So this was the back end of the park or the boundary of the fairground and the rest of the fairground was on that side. And where we stood now at the back of this convention centre here, which I said is a private property, this is the exact site where the water chute ride was. So you had the lift hill right up here and the water splash would have been down the bottom side down there and then the Big Dipper was directly over there. So what I'm going to do is show you a photo fade now, taken right from here, looking towards the Big Dipper in that side, but the water chute wasn't in this photo fade here. Now it's really hard to believe while well stood here, but right in front of us, just here, was the main entrance to the fairground or the fun fair, right here. So all this would have been buildings and then a Grand Avenue going through the fun fair with rides all the way up, right down to the far side over there. You had a water chute on the right and then the Big Dipper right at the back against the boundary. It was sort of in an L shape, so you had this section here, and then it went off that way. So just a bit further round, you would have had the fairground entrance just there, and it would have been heading towards us now. And as you can see, we've got plenty of mounds and things here now, a bit of landscaping. But this would have all been flat, straight through. And right there is that white building, which is sat on the site of the water chute and the remaining section of the fairground. But that's the original level down there where the building is on the car park level. It's all tarmacked. Probably would have been back then, actually. But just down here in the trees, I've noticed an old boundary wall here, right on the edge of what is today the children's zoo, which is just behind this fence here, which sits on the main site of the fun fair. You can see a lot of concrete blocks and things down here and an old wall in there. So they would be remains from the old fairground days. Anyway, Let's head further around and see if we can see anything else. This back section here of the children's zoo 
is the original boundary for the fun fair. But I do believe this section right here, just this small section, and was always a children's zoo, even back in the 1950s. But we are following the boundary and the fairground would have been the top end here and all the way around the other side. But today, the children's zoo has taken over most of the site of the former fairground or the main section of it. Which is a real shame because it means, I mean it is closed as well, it means we can't go in there today to have a look. I would have loved to have gone in and see what remains because I'm betting that if there's anything left of the funfair it would all be in there because the children's zoo was just built over the top of it. So I bet the original pathways and walls and things exist within there. We're heading back down the main parade now and we're going to head towards what was the entrance to the funfair or the main entrance to the funfair. I believe there was three. And just before we get to the funfair, right here behind that fence was a ride called the Peter Pan Railway. Now, if you were a regular visitor to Butlins in the early days, you would remember what that was. They had them there as well. It was basically a kiddie's car ride that went round various scenes, but that was located on this section here all the way right. It took quite a large site up anyway for the funfair. So let's head up here now to the entrance. And here we are at the original entrance for the funfair, the Battersea funfair. And I'm told this hasn't changed much at all. Today is a children's zoo. And I'll just show you down these stairs here. So these steps are the original stairs with these original terraces as well. And right there were the original ticket booths to head into the funfair. So you had the main funfair right here where the zoo is. The Big Dipper was on the far left over there and it spread all the way down the other side. Now I wanted to do a before and after of this next picture which is of the entrance of the funfair but it was taken from a rooftop walkway that used to exist across the parade here and it doesn't any longer so I can't match the picture up with it being a lot lower than the picture was but I'm going to try my best if not I'll just put the picture in so you can see but it is taken from roughly this angle here and this wall that's at the side of the funfair entrance here so the ticket or the turnstiles would have been right here which means that this wall here would have been directly into the park itself. If you look down there, this would have been inside the park boundary and the ticket kiosks were here. And I'm told a lot of people used to shimmy down this wall or drop down this wall here just to get in without paying. There you go, I hope you enjoyed our look at the history of Battersea Park, including the Fun Fair, the Victorian Park and also the festival. Thank you very much for joining us and watching the video. I'll see you next week in the next one. Bye.